In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can rig any creature in Blender. If you wanted to learn rigging for a while, but haven't yet found that one workflow that just works, this is it. This is the one. So I did make a tutorial about this a few months back, but in that workflow I'm using multiple armature objects in the same rig, I'm placing empty objects left and right, I'm adding weird constraints, I'm basically digging myself a hole for 55 minutes straight. So since then I've learned a lot and I've got a much easier and faster workflow that I can't wait to show you. So here we are in Blender version 3.3 and we're gonna start off by deleting everything and creating an armature object. And inside of this object our entire rig is going to be placed bones and IK constraints and everything. So let's go to edit mode and now you can see that we can edit this bone. So let's view this from the side and you can select one of the end pieces here and you can hold down control and it will snap to the grid. And a nice way to make this always snap to the grid is to enable this magnet icon. You can also press shift tab. So now you can move this around and it will always snap to the grid, which is going to make it a lot easier to place these mechanical parts after we've made the rig. Okay, so this bone is going to be our core bone. And I want to make a six-legged insect. So let's start out by making the two front legs first and then duplicate them and work our way backwards. So let's view this from the top. And to duplicate our core bone, let's go Shift D. And now let's go R and then rotate it by 90 degrees. Let's hold down Control. So let's extrude this by selecting this part and pressing E. Let's do two meters. And then let's do one more with two meters. And then actually let's do one more. I think you can press Shift R. Yeah, okay, perfect. So each leg is going to be four parts. I think that's good. So let's do this for the other side as well. Shift D and place it here. E, extrude, extrude, extrude. Now these are going to be the legs, but we are also going to be using something called inverse kinematics, which basically means that we want some controller bones at the edge of these legs. So let's make one more bone, but let's just make it a short one like this. And let's do it over here as well. Okay, so let me just disable the snapping for now. What's really important about these bones is that these cannot be connected to this because that's going to mess things up. So you want to select these IK controllers and go Alt P, clear parent. So now this is an individual bone and then this one, clear parent. Now what we have, we have our core bone, we have our right leg, we have our left leg and we have these IK controllers at the edges. Perfect. So now we can test this rig by going to post mode. So let's go to post mode. You can also press control tab and just pull down like this. And here you can see that these bones are all connected to each other. So you could animate your legs like this. This would take a long time. Like, can you imagine how long this would take? So we are going to use something called inverse kinematics, which is amazing. So select this IK controller and hold down shift and select this bone and go shift I, which is add IK and then set it to active bone. So now you can select the IK controller and you can move this around and it looks good. Let's do this for the other leg as well. Select the IK controller first and then this bone and then shift I to active bone. So now we got this IK controller here and we got it here. But there's one thing that we've forgotten to do. We have forgotten to connect these legs to the core bone. So let's go back to edit mode by pressing tab. Let's select the first bone of each leg, this and this, and then hold down shift and select the core bone, control P and make parent keep offset. So now we got this relationship line here, which is perfect. But now when we go back to post mode, things are going to look really weird. Now let's try and move this around. Look at that. Yeah, this is a little bit weird. So what's happening here is that both of these IK constraints are trying to control the entire rig like this. We want the IK controllers to stop here at the center. So to fix this, let's select one of the bones with the IK controller. Let's go to bone constraint properties. And here you can see the chain length is set to zero, which is basically infinity. But if you set it to wireframe shading, you can see that when we start increasing this, you can see that we're changing the chain length and we want it to stop here. So now when we move this, it works as intended again. So let's do this for the other one as well. Okay, sweet, this is all coming together. Okay, so now let's try and give our rig an interesting pose. And I'm going to show you a really big problem with this rig. So let's place this here, let's place this here. And now we can take this core bone, you can move this up and you can rotate it around. And it's actually, it's looking quite powerful already. However, if you move the IK controllers, you can see that these legs move really unnaturally. It doesn't make sense. Look at that. No one walks like this. So to fix this weird behavior, we can go over to the bone properties under inverse kinematics and we can start locking the different axes of the bone. So for example, we want this bone to lay completely flat and then we want it to go up like this. So let's just try it. Let's see X axis. Okay, it's not that one. It's not that one. There we go, it's the Z axis. And then let's also move this a little bit over here so we can see. Yeah, we also want to clean up this little weird rotation. So now this bone is only rotating on the x-axis, like this. This bone as well is probably going to be the same axis. Yep. Yeah, 
Okay, so that looks correct. Okay, so now let's do these other bones. But these three bones are going to have the same axis. So let's hold down shift and select all of them. So now we can hold down alt and try this on all these bones. So yeah, this looks correct. And then it's going to be the Y axis as well. Okay, good. So now all these bones have their X and Y axis locked and they can only move on the Z axis. Look at that. This looks like a lot more natural leg movement. Yeah, now this bone essentially only moves like this and these bones will only move like this. So it's a lot easier to make these joint or use the joint objects in, for example, the mechanical creature kit. <laughs> okay, so now we have to do the same for the other leg. Okay, perfect. Okay, so now we want to add more legs, but before we do that, I just like to reset the position of these bones. So press A to select everything, go to pose, clear transform, all. So let's go back to edit mode. Now we're going to duplicate these legs. And at this point in the tutorial, you can choose how many legs you want. I want six legs in total. So let's click and drag and let's hold down shift and click and drag. Let's go shift D, hold down control and let's do two meters. Let's go shift R. So it's like this. Now what we can do is you can go back to post mode again, select all these IK controllers and you can move them down. And then if you like, you can actually scale these down. And once you've scaled them in, you can press alt S to reset the scale. So you're basically just adjusting the location. And then let's move these. Okay, perfect. So that's it. Now you got yourself a six legged creature with IK setup, and it's actually really easy to work with. And what's really cool about this is that if you go to object mode, you can select the rig, you can go to object data properties and you can set it to rest position. So now you can see that all these bones are perfectly aligned with the grid. So it's really easy to just add objects. So I know it's a little bit of an unusual workflow, but for me, this has been really nice for just figuring out creatures and coming up with unique shapes. It feels a little bit backwards at first, but once you get used to making first the rig and then adding the objects, it's really nice actually. So my workflow usually consists of this. I first make the rig and then I set it to the rest position. And then I use my mechanical creature kit, which I just launched. You can check it out, link in description. So here you can take one of these joints, for example. Let's take one of these and let's take one of these. So now you could uh, press tab and select one of these points. Press shift S and pull down and go cursor to selected. And then you can select one of these and go shift S and there will selection to cursor. So now when we zoom in on this, let's rotate it. Here you can see that this is going to be perfectly lined up. Look at that. And you can just scale it up. And then you could take this one. Let me just hide this. So now here you could scale this up and now these will perfectly line up. So now you can parent these objects to the armature. So select the armature, select the bone and then control P to the bone, which is highlighted. And then take another bone like this and parent to bone. So now you can take the rig and you can go back to post position. Now you would have this bone that is it just works. Okay, so what's really cool about this workflow is that it actually opens up the possibilities to really make any type of rig. So now what I want to try and make is I want to try and use these same principles to make a much more advanced rig. I want to make like a hand that is rigged similar to a walking creature, but it's it's a hand instead. I haven't tried this yet. So I just want to, I just want to see if that's possible. So let me just uh, make a new blend file. I'm going to make an armature. Yes, yeah, so we're going to have a core bone. So this will be the index finger, I think. Uh, wait, hang on. This should be longer. Yeah, that's good, I think. And then this will be the IK bone. I had to think for a moment there. Okay, so this is going to be one finger. Let's first just set this up. Let's clear the parent. Let's go to post mode. And let's set this up as an IK. Okay, that works. Now we have to parent these. Keep offset. Change the chain length to three. Okay, that's good. And in edit mode, we want to duplicate the fingers. Three. So that's four fingers. And then I want to make uh, the thumb which is probably over here somewhere. And I think that should only be like two, right? One, two, yeah. And parent this, keep offset, and then clear the parent on this. And add the IK, boop. Okay, nice. Look at that. <laughs> now this could be like a hand that is walking around. Oh no, we forgot to do the... <laughs> a hand doesn't look like that. I forgot to lock the IKs. So I'm just going to do it for one of them instead. I'm not sure if this is going to work if we look. Yeah, this will be really weird. Yeah, this is going to have to move up. That's the only way. 
but maybe we could limit it maybe there oh it still just doesn't it just ignores that that's <laughs> that's weird okay yeah there's a lot of stuff in rigging that just doesn't make sense okay so that's one finger now we can go back to edit mode and we can duplicate our fingers ah we got a rigged hand which <laughs> look at that i think this could be a really cool walking hand uh, thing Okay, so that is the workflow I usually use to rig creatures. I like to make the rig first as a way to outline the core shape of the creature. And then I add features using various type of mechanical parts. And instead of modeling these same parts over and over again, I made an asset pack, the Mechanical Creature Kit. It's got over 250 detailed parts. It comes with eight animated rigs and a couple of example creatures. So this is Huldis, a crab with eight legs. And this is Brynhild a tripod rig using drivers and constraints to emulate a realistic cable system that controls each leg's movement in three axes. And if you want to make your own rig super easy to use with the mechanical creature kit, simply create an armature, go to edit mode and scale down the bone by a value of 0.04. Press shift S and go selection to grid. So now the bone is lined up with the grid and the scale fits the asset pack since all the parts are modeled to scale. So now you can simply click and drag any part from the asset browser straight into the 3D viewport. You can learn more about the mechanical creature kit in the demo video and on the product page on Blender Market. Links in the description. Oh, and by the way, does anyone know if there's a way to batch parent all selected objects to the closest bone without any deform? I can't use the armature modifier because it will deform the mesh and break most procedural materials. And since these models are hard surface, we don't want them to deform. And look, each bone has an origin, right? So the data is here. What if it could be one more option in the parent menu to simply batch parent all these objects to the armature and just select two nearest bone or something? And it will parent all these objects to the rig based on origin proximity. I don't know if this should be an add-on, but if this was a part of default Blender, I would use it all the time. Thanks for watching.